Okay, hello YouTube. Today I'm going to be going over some common mistakes that adults make when they approach the game of chess and how you can go about avoiding those mistakes so that you can get better results and that you can actually have a more effective training regimen to actually make yourself better at the game of chess. So if you like content like this and you want to see more of it, please hit that subscribe button and click on your notification icon. So one of the things that adults do that really gets in the way of them getting better at chess, and it's one of these things that kids don't do, is they tend to be terrified of making mistakes when they play. They tend to actually be more terrified of making mistakes than they are of finding the right idea. The correct mindset needs to be the opposite. You need to be more terrified of missing the right idea than you are of making a mistake. A mistake shouldn't be something that you're afraid of. Uh, a great example of this is I keep having people tell me all the time. They keep telling me stuff like, oh, I calculated this variation and it looked right, and I'm like, okay, why didn't you play it? And they say, well, I didn't play it because it looked dangerous. That's not a reason not to play anything. If you have calculated something and it looks right and you don't see a defense, you need to play it. Uh, if you see a sacrifice and the sacrifice looks correct, you need to play it. If you see a pawn that you can capture and it looks scary, but you calculated and you do not see a reason that you can't take that pawn, go ahead and take the pawn. Now, there's a reason for this. The reason is, is because as long as you're going through your process and then playing whatever moves you come up with at the end of your process, if you lose that game, if you make a mistake, you can go back and you correct. What the issue is for adults players with getting better is losing is part of the process of getting better. Making mistakes is part of the process of getting better. Uh, it's very, very important that you lose games, but it's very important that you lose games in the right way. You wanna lose games that leave open the possibility of you learning from your mistakes. If you play a game and you don't play the move that you calculated, what exactly is there for you to fix? Your process was right, you just chose not to play the move. There is literally nothing for you to fix there. And that's a problem, because at that point it is impossible for you to get better at the game of chess. And this is something that seriously gets in the way of adult players getting better. It's a psychological thing on how the brain works. As you get older, you become more frightened of making errors. And this actually prevents you from achieving proficiency in a subject that you're not already intimately familiar with. So if you're a new player to chess as an adult, or if you're getting back into the game as an adult, this is a psychological barrier that you have to get over. So I'm just going to give this example of this game that I played, and I'm just going to kind of tell you kind of what I was thinking during this game. I picked this game because it was a game where I had very few errors, and I found a lot of really cool tactical ideas. So my accuracy in this game was something like 92%, and according to the computer, I only had two, ac two inaccuracies and one mistake. Uh, so I'll show you how I achieved that. You know, I, I achieved every kind of adult's dream. I made, I made very few mistakes, so I didn't do anything terribly wrong. But you're going to see some of these moves, and you're going to be like, whoa, that move looks really aggressive. And of course it is, because I was more terrified, me personally, I was more terrified of missing the right idea than I was of making a mistake. Making a mistake doesn't bother me at all. I make them all the time. And I can lose a game just as easily and make a major blunder as I can by... Uh, I can lose a game just as easily by sacrificing a piece and it not being sound as I can by choosing not to sacrifice that piece. So you can lose just as easily. Either way, you can still lose the game. So we have a Catalan variation, and I play... Uh, this pawn captures c4. So, so far I don't have a lot of comments on this game. I'm basically following my theory. And this is kind of the method that I use is I follow my theory. And then in my head, I just kind of keep repeating to myself, okay, just follow your theory until you get to a point where you're out of your theory. And that's another important thing to keep track of. When you're playing your game, this is your personal game. Okay, this is not, you're not analyzing something um, in 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 theory or in hindsight or you're not looking at it from some third party perspective you're looking at it from your perspective and your theory is going to end at a much different place than my theory your theory might end on move two or move three my theory might end on move 15 or move 20 and it's nothing to be ashamed of don't pretend like you know what you're doing when you don't as soon as you get to the end of your preparation, that's when you start playing chess. Now here, I'm still well within my preparation, and then my opponent plays queen a4. So now I'm going to be completely honest with, with you, the audience here. My preparation after queen a4 doesn't go as deep. I have actually much deeper preparation against moves. Like, there's a lot of moves here, so I have a lot very deep preparation against knight e5. I have some extremely deep preparation against the move queen c2. 
Uh, my preparation against the move queen a4 isn't nearly as deep. I mostly just know that I can play a6 and b5 here, and I can shuffle my bishop to b7 and e4 and hit the queen on the c2 square. And after that, I'm pretty much on my own. I'm just playing chess. And that's fine. That's always been enough theory for me. I've always gotten decent positions, and I've always played chess very well from there. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I have to just work with the knowledge that I have, and I have to approach the game in such a way that I'm just constantly calculating and assessing the positions when I need to. But right now, I'm still in my preparation. a6 is fine. Queen c4, b5. Queen c2, bishop b7 is still in my preparation. Bishop d2, bishop e4. That's the last move of my personal preparation is just the move bishop e4. So move 10, and I'm kind of on my own. So queen to c1. Now my next move is pretty straightforward. I just kind of develop a piece. That's the first move that I make on my own. I'm just developing a piece, getting it into the game. I kind of understand what a lot of the ideas are here. You know, just I'm going to play knight b7. At some point I want to play c5. Obviously I have some incentive to get this rook off the diagonal at some point. And I've got a bunch of obvious moves that I like to make. So that's kind of where I usually end my personal preparation is where I understand kind of where the pieces are supposed to go later. But at this point, since I don't have exact moves in my preparation, I'm going to be calculating and assessing and going through my process and playing the moves. So anyways, nothing crazy quite has happened yet. Bishop a5, they hit this pawn. I go ahead and defend it, and I get the rook out of the line of fire with rook c8. Pretty straightforward. And then my opponent plays knight on b to d2. I don't want to lose the bishop pair, so bishop d5. Rook e1. And then I really don't want him to play e4 and kick me out of the center, so I go ahead and I plant my knight on the e4 square. And now my opponent plays kind of a goofy-looking move. He plays b4. So this was a little frustrating to look at at first, because, okay, b4, that really prevents c5. And that's kind of one of my main ideas. So I have to decide how I'm going to approach this. Now you see the computer is pointing to this knight b6 move. This is where I actually kind of make my error in this position. I didn't play knight b6. What I instead played was another idea. But knight b6 is a good idea in this position for obvious reasons. We're aiming at the c4 square, we're aiming at the a4 square, we're taking advantage of all these uh, weaknesses that white has just left in his position with the move pawn to b4. I took another approach. I played the move bishop d6, which the computer considers an inaccuracy. But it's an inaccuracy that comes with a solid idea and a solid concept about where to put the rest of my pieces. It nails down that pawn and overprotects it. Uh, which should leave this bishop kind of out of play for the rest of the game. Another part of this idea is I'm preparing at some point to play f5, I'm preparing to free up the knight, and I'm also preparing to free up the queen. So now I have a plan of development for all of my pieces. So even though this move is an inaccuracy, it's an inaccuracy, it's an inaccuracy that allows me to position my pieces on better squares and allows me to figure out the next six or seven moves of the game. It's a move that I fundamentally understand, so I played it, and then after the game I can look at this move and I can say, oh, okay, what did I miss, what did I do wrong? Because knight b6 is clearly better, what was the plan that I missed? So now my opponent plays knight to b3, and then I play uh, knight to b6, because of course now this square is just glaring, uh, the knight abandoned the c4 square completely, so now I definitely want that square, <laughs> I want to play, uh, I definitely want to play knight to b6. So now my opponent plays queen c2, and then I plant that knight on c4, so now my position's looking pretty good. I've got two knights on two really awesome squares. And now my opponent plays apparently a highly questionable move of blunder. He plays pawn to a3, and then I just continue with my original plan. I play pawn to f5, and I'm, I'm going for f4. And that turns out to be kind of the best idea. Um, the computer's already saying that this position is kind of going black's way. It's like 1.5 in favor of black, but f5, f4 is absolutely the right idea, and it fits in with what my previous plan was of playing f5 and f4 and continuing with an attack. So now my opponent plays rook to f1, and I continue with g5. I'm just going for this kingside attack. I'm just going crazy. Now it turns out I actually missed a tactic here. Uh, g5, g4 is the right idea. I actually missed this move. Knight takes a4, uh, which apparently, knight takes a5, which apparently would have uh, one uh, significant amounts of material and black would have been better um, and that's like uh, the engine found that after the game so that's a tactic that I'm going to have to look out for next time but I played the move that I thought was best I played this move g5 going for g4 and going for this big attack so now my opponent plays this move knight e1 which is also apparently bad I played g4 which is apparently the correct idea yet again uh, just going in for this all-out kind of kingside attack and then my opponent plays knight d3, I play queen g5, um, apparently this is my only other inaccuracy in the game. Uh, I could have played the move uh, knight to g5, which would have been a little bit better. So now my opponent plays this move knight to c5, which is a mistake, and now I do find the absolute kind of best move in the position, and it's a move that maybe a lot of adult players uh, would maybe shy away from because it looks kind of scary, 
And But again, I'm more frightened of not playing it. Because if the move wins, and I didn't play it, I would actually regret that more than if I play the move and I end up losing, if I end up being wrong. That's not a big deal to me. I've been wrong before. I've lost plenty of chess games, and I'm going to lose plenty more. But I'm terrified of this move not being right, which is this move knight e3. So this is the type of move you need to keep your eye out for. And of course, all tactical moves are moves that you need to keep your eyes out for. But this move knight e3, the main idea is if f e3, I'm going to be coming in with queen e3. I'm going to have this check here. And this is going to be potentially a, a really devastating attack against the white king. And there just seems to be an, an awful lot here to the point where I didn't think that I could possibly be losing in this position. I mean, for example, like, let's just say that they play f captures e3. We have queen e3, king over, knight g3. I did not see how they defended. You know, hg3, queen g3. Maybe there's some magical defense here, you know, with everything aiming at the king, but I don't see it. So if I don't see a defense, I have to play this move. And as it turns out, there's not a defense. So there is no way to defend against this attack. This should be a devastating attack um, if they take it. So if they can't take it, knight a3 has to be good. So he played queen d3 trying to get out of this situation. But of course, the problem isn't that we can take the big juicy looking rook. The problem is this king is horribly weak. So I actually, again, make the correct choice. I take the bishop and I weaken up those light squares because I'm going after the king. So he tries to cover things up with knight e4. Now bishop e4 is protecting the queen, uh, hitting the queen and protecting the knight. Uh, we have queen d2, and now queen h5, again, playing for mate. I'm, I'm more terrified of missing uh, these ideas than I am of making a mistake. So I'm playing for this mate with queen to h5. Uh, we have queen c3, rook f6, just again playing for mate, going for rook h6, knight back. And then we have rook h6 playing for mate h4. And I saw all of this, and it just looked like knight h4 should be completely winning. Because they're not going to be able to play gh4, because then everything comes in with effect. And then, of course, the main point is I'm setting up this shot with the move knight f3, and I didn't see a way for him to counter it. So he goes ahead and he plays knight takes, and I go ahead and I follow through with my shot. I play knight f3, and my opponent resigns. Because there is, in fact, no defense. Um, there's... You, you can't take this knight. You are getting mated in one. There's no place to move the king. The game is absolutely over. And after knight f3 check, he resigned. So this turned out to be a very, very pretty game. And I had two two big takeaways from this game. Is Of course, I made some errors. You know, I missed some stuff where I could have played like knight takes a5, and I missed those tactics. But the main thing is I always followed my process throughout the game. Every time I thought I had the best move, no matter what it was, whether it was a sacrifice of material or whether it was even pushing pawns in front of my king for an attack, I always played what I thought was the best move. And because of that, I didn't miss any really, really cool ideas in the game uh, that I had calculated. Everything that I missed was stuff that I hadn't looked at or stuff that I hadn't calculated. And then when you go back and you look at the game, you can ask yourself, well, why did I miss that? Why didn't I consider that move? Why didn't I look at that move better? And what can I do to find those ideas in the future? And that's how we get better at chess. And that's how you get better at chess if you're a kid. That's how you get better at chess if you're an adult. But especially for adults, it's very difficult to do this because you're naturally afraid to play your own ideas. It's kind of like speaking up in the board meeting. Just don't do it. <laughs> but always play your own ideas. Always play your own thoughts. Always play your own ideas and variations. And you will get better because you're going to find these ideas more and more often. And every time you miss them, that's a step in the right direction. You should be looking at failure as just as important as your successes. Your losses, if you lose in the right way, are just as important as you finding those right ideas and being right. Being wrong in chess is just as important as being right. So anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope you can incorporate uh, this approach and these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.